guys. All right, so we're here and we are ready to begin our skills lesson. Now today what we're gonna do, similarly to the other day, we're going to be grouping together the different ways in which we have learned to spell the sound D. We're gonna be looking at all the different ways in which we've learned it, there's three of them. So the three ways we've learned to spell the D sound. But before we do that, and you heard this when I was trying to sound out those uh, verbs that ended in the T sound. Sometimes even I struggle with the D versus T. That's because D and T are what's called sister sounds. Because even if you look at my mouth making the D and the T sound, they're shaped very similarly. Actually almost the exact same. But what you'll notice is the way in which my, well, you won't see it, but when you say it yourself, D and T, your tongue moves differently between the two sounds. So say D. Good. Now say T. Right. T has a little like, like almost like a little spit to it, like a sp -sp 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 coming out with it. And also your tongue moves more when you make the T sound than the D sound. Like every now, like with every other sound we've reviewed, introduced, or organized this unit, it's nothing, it's not a new sound. We are looking at different ways to spell familiar consonant sounds. Different ways to spell familiar consonant sounds. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to say some words, and if I say a word that has the t sound, the t sound, you're going to give me cross fingers. And if I say a word that has the d sound, you're going to give me two fingers. So t, d, t, d, t, d. That almost sounds like our past tense maker dance, doesn't it? Mmm. So can we assume that one of our d spellings is going to be the ed? Probably. All right, so let's go ahead and look at these different words. The first word is tape. Good, that's a t. Dip. Mm -hmm. Ditch. The sound is d. When you write out the word ditch, it does have a t. It doesn't have a t. It has the letter t because it's part of the tch. Okay. All right. So it's not no. So the sound. Remember, look at the sounds. The sound is d. Okay. Sorry. Tuck. Mm -hmm. Duck. Good. Drill. I'll say that one again. Drill. Mm -hmm. There was no buzz. There was no like. Z -z 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 -z. Okay. Ten. <laughs> Dark. Mm -hmm. Taste. Ooh, it has two t in it. T aced. Good. Dim. Like the lights are dim. Good job. So like I said, they are sister sounds, so they are a little bit tricky, but you're doing a wonderful job. So like I said, let's look at the different ways that we have learned to spell the sound D. All right. So the very first spelling we learned was the spelling D. So D dot D. Uh, we also have been introduced to the double letter spelling, such as the word add. We add all the time. So D, 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 add, and our final spelling from our past tense experience was adding ED and how that past tense maker often makes the sound D, like in the word filled, like in the word filled. Now, what I want you to notice here is how often we use each of these sounds. How often we use each of these sounds. So using that same, throw my things on the floor model. So. <laughs> dot D is most of the time, D D a little bit of the time, and E D a little bit more of the time, but still nowhere near as much as D. So if I hear the sound D spelled D, 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 
D. That many times, it's going to be a D. So eight, because there's two left, is going to be a D. Now, one of them is going to be an ED, and actually this one here is going to be split in half some kind of way, because that is still ED, and just a little tiny bit is the DD spelling. Is the DD spelling. So words like duck and mad use the D, but words like add and madder, so more mad, use the DD, and then we know filled, but also planned and trimmed. Remember, past tense verbs, using it all over the place. Let's do some together just like we did with the t sound. This is page 12.1 in your cat book, the front of page 12.1 in your cat book. Yep, just like the other day, we're going to do this together. You're going to take a picture and turn it in, and then you're going to be responsible for the backside by yourself. Hopefully green next right. All right, this first word, it is a tricky word. And the only reason it's tricky is because we haven't learned the O-W spelling for the ow sound officially yet. So this is down. The word is down. How is the sound d spelled in the word down? D spelled D. Excellent. D spelled D. Down. Down. The word is down. My next word, another tricky word. We know it's tricky because the heart part is underlined for us. That's so nice. The O-U-L is not playing by the rules. That is the heart part. But the K and the D are following the rules because they're not underlined. The word is could. In the word could, how is the sound D spelled? With the letter D. Excellent. Could, could spelled D. Already we see D used in the beginning and in the end of words. The next word, y'all tell me this one. Duck, this word is duck, excellent. D -uck. Duck, oh look, there's one of our alternate K. Spellings, the digraph CK. Good job. So duck is at the beginning. And if I don't stop stepping on these cubes, this is so dangerous. D uh duck uses the single letter D. Alright, this next word. Y'all know this word. We do this one all we do this all the time. Matter of fact, we're finishing module four this week, taking a test on that, wrapping up. That big old chunk, we are going to add. We're going to add. Good, 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 good. So we see that the DD comes at the end of this word, followed by a short vowel sound. The word add uses DD at the end of the word, followed by the short vowel sound. Let's make sure there's no other rules for that right click. Hold on. Make sure I'm giving you all the rules to be successful. Okay, so yes, most of the time it's in the middle, connecting a root and an ending, but there are some exceptions, such as the word add, and another one we'll see shortly. So this is generally an end of syllable because it's connecting, making a connection where we had to double up. Based on some other rules we learned, such as we see in this work here. Okay, this is a verb. It shows action. Something has been not cut. I didn't say cut it. That says trimmed. This says trimmed. And this is another example of doubling the final consonant before of the root before adding an ending. Trimmed. All of these will be verbs that happened in the past. The event has already occurred because that is one of our past tense makers. I don't know why I had the same dance with a different song. Like that was weird. That was weird. don't don't trust me to come up with the choreography. That is not one of my strengths. I have no problem admitting that. All right, this next word here, let's sound it out. Okay, that word feels weird. Let's 
cut off this first sound. Do we see a familiar word inside of this word? We do. We see red inside this word. Now let's add the sh, sh, red, sh, red, sh, red, sh, shred, shred. The word is shred. So kind of like if you get a taco and you have little teeny tiny bits of lettuce, it's called shredded lettuce. Or if you want, well, actually, I also want a taco. I, mean, I like tacos. If anybody wants to like, I do. I take bribes in taco, the form of tacos. I'm joking, but kind of not. I love tacos. Anyway, so the cheese, the little tiny cheese, is called shredded. So that, yeah, that's what that is. That's what that procedure is. But my question to you is actually, how do we spell the sound d in the word shred? Yes, we spell it with a single letter D at the end of the word. So sh, r, e, d, shred. Excellent. And here we get a wonderful opportunity to go from shred to shredding. So the actual action of taking that head of lettuce and breaking it down into little teeny tiny pieces, or taking that block of cheese and Tiny, tiny, little teeny tiny pieces would be shredding, which is a root plus ending, an ending showing action. This is a verb. Shredding. How do we spell the sound d in the word shredding? D yes, yes, two D's. Excellent. Shred. Ing, shredding. This is a verb using the double letter spelling because eh, shred. Doesn't matter that there's two vowel sounds and three vowel letters before the, I mean, consonant, blah. Two consonant sounds and three consonant letters before the eh. The question we need to check is, and look here, is that there is one lone consonant after following the Eh, the short vowel eh. So to attach an ending, you have to double that last letter. Shredding. The next word? Wedding. Wedding. Okay, ing, it's a verb. Wedding. Because the act of a, so going to a wedding, you're watching, you're witnessing the act of people actually getting getting wed they're getting wed that's what's happening so it's an interesting concept of a verb wedding because it's also a place or an event that you go to but you're going somewhere to see the action of the people that are about to wed they're going to wed which is another way of saying get married so it's a little bit more abstract in the terms of verb because it's not always just a verb. Like, I just went to a wedding. By the time you see this, I would have just went to a wedding. I physically went to a place to see people who were going to wed. But we consider it like a place and a verb. Let me not get that deep into it. The question I need to, you to answer to me is, how do we spell the sound d in the word wedding? Yes, we use two D's. It's in the middle at the end of a syllable because w ed has a short vowel sound. So in order to attach the ending ing, we need the use of the double letter d spelling, wedding. The next word is odd. And you might say your teacher's a little odd. That whole wedding rant was a little odd. Odd is another one of our examples, our, our exceptions, our surprises, or you just have to know it, like add, where the short vowel is followed by the double letter D, and we're not attaching anything. But odd and add are in a short list of the rare one-syllable words that end in the double D, D, Spelling, but what I will say is it never occurs at the beginning of a word. It never occurs at the beginning of a word. All right. The next one we have is... Hide. Hide. Good. How is the D sound spelled in the word hide? It is spelled with the letter D. Good. This is a... Single D, D, 
in the word hide is actually the last sound, not the last letter, the last sound in this word. It is the final sound in this word, hide. The next word, and I, and the reason, and this is also a tricky word with a heart part, that vowel is all over the place, the A-I is making the S eh sound. I didn't make it up, not my, I, I didn't make up the word said, but the reason that one's not underlined and could and down are is because it's a, it's a unit one tricky word. That's where the distinction comes in. How long ago did you learn it? So like I said, this heart part is the vowel, but this, so we're going to, we're going to put a little, we'll make this the heart part right here. This AI is the heart part. You just have to know that. But that does mean that the S and the D are playing by the rules, meaning that should be a S and a D sound coming from those letters. So that means that this word said has the sound D spelled how by the letter D. Excellent. So S, A, notice I'm saying the letter names, I, D, because it's a tricky word, said. And the last word... The last word, planned, planned, past tense maker, past tense verb, ending in ed, we hear the sound d, so, p, u, and, plan, I want the plan to have already happened, it was planned, the vowel sound is short, a, so I'm going to double that last letter, that single consonant and add the ending ed making the d sound planned planned all right guys so we have this the front which we did together yours should basically look exactly like mine it should look exactly like mine except maybe with the color changes uh, yours is probably all one color which is fine but other than that your paper should look exactly like my paper you're going to take a picture and turn it in as part of your assignment today. Um, the part you will complete independently, and I'm trying to stay on the light in case you need to pause, <laughs> is the part you'll complete independently is the back side. Did I give you a good shot to pause on? I hope so. All right, so let me show you the, the back side, the back side. The back looks like this. Again, it is us attaching endings to adjectives. Mad, sad, hard, red, loud. Those are either feelings, which are adjectives, or they are textures, which is an adjective, or colors, which is an adjective. So I said somebody is more mad, more mad, madder. But ah, I can't just add the er. Uh, because it's followed by a single d, we need to double it up. Maddest, someone is the maddest, because now we're describing the person. So yes, these are adjectives that need to get some oomph, need some emphasis. But in order to add the ending, sometimes we have to double the last letter. If the vowel sound is short and followed by a single consonant, you have to double the last letter. If it is not a short vowel, do you double the last letter? I think not. If it's a vowel team, you double the last letter. If there's more than one consonant after the short vowel, do we double the last letter? Nope. Not, nope. Not even a little bit. Alright guys, so yeah, that's the back side. Then today, you're going to read Jack's tail. Same rules apply. I'm not going to read these five questions to you, but any additional questions I have that I've gotten from, you know, our textbook, I will read out loud to you. These questions are what's considered decodable, meaning that you have the tools in your toolbox to read them and provide answers to them that make sense. So, but before I send you off, I do want to preview quite a bit of the vocabulary that are in this text. Now, that means these are words that you can sound out, but just because you can sound them out and read them doesn't mean you're going to necessarily know what they mean. If you remember when we j met Jack, he was an older gentleman, and sometimes what we'll notice is that generationally, certain language patterns, certain words don't always keep going. Uh, not 
words like the and who and horses, those stay the same. But words that show meaning that aren't their original, like dictionary, look it up, this is what it means. So, one word I have for you is sharp dress, blah, if I can talk that great. Sharp dresser, which is a person who wears stylish and fashionable clothes. Someone who's stylish and fashionable. Um, another expression you're going to see in today's text, tipped his hat, tipped his hat, which is, so you're going to lift or, t like, that is a gesture where you move your hat to show politeness. It's a greeting. It's a greeting. Gents is short for gentlemen, which is a polite way of saying, uh, like, a group of men. Nabbed means caught. Did his time means stayed in jail. What kind of story are we reading today? I don't know. Let him back out. Let him out of jail. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm intrigued. I'm like, what's going on? Someone's going to jail? Someone's going to do their time and get out? What is this? I don't know, but this is Jack's tale. Is he talking about himself or somebody else? I don't know. Uh, we know that something's going to get drawn and not drawn a picture, but that means pulled. Outlaws, people living outside of the law, meaning they do not follow the laws. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, let's read and find out what's going to happen in this story today with Jack's tale about outlaws. I'm definitely intrigued. I hope you are too. And that is all I have for you. I will see you guys a little bit later on. Until then, bye.